Welcome to Revamped Outdoors. My name's Elliot. It's waterfall season, so that means we gotta spend money we don't have on things we don't actually need. It is waterfall season, so all my free time has been in the pursuit of flappiness. I don't care. I'm going to keep it in there. I'm proud of that one. But uh, we're going to make a push-pull today. I guess we're not going to do much of anything. I already made it, and I'm making a video about it. But nonetheless, I'm going to tell you how I made a push-pull. A push-pull is just something we use, especially in waterfowl hunting. You use it in shallow water. Um, people do use it quite a bit, like for bone fishing in tropical areas. So push poles generally have a little wider base than a pole, the pole itself. This gives uh, the user a little bit more purchase on anything that they're using to push the boat along. So I use push poles quite a bit waterfowl hunting because a lot of the time I don't necessarily need to go very far in distance. I just have to move just that little bit extra to either get a decoy out of the water or move the boat just slightly. Um, this is way more efficient than using a paddle. Generally if you use a paddle, especially in small boat boats, bolts, bolts, small boats, you can move the boat a little bit further than you wanted, then you have to back paddle. It's just a little bit easier with a push pull. So naturally, uh, I don't have an, a store I can just go and buy a push pull, uh, especially one that's specifically designed for waterfall and smaller boats in marshes so what i do have though it's a 3d printer and uh it's kind of what we do here so i figured i'd make the end that goes on the push pull itself and i modeled that up in fusion 360. but before we get into that what i'm using for a handle for this is just a stair railing um, it has one flat side on it the stair railing is a one and a half inches in diameter you can get round dowels uh, that size but my local big box uh, home supply store didn't actually have dowels of that size and that length so this pull, push pull I'm using uh, now I built this one as just kind of a, a test to see if a 3d printed push pull foot would hold up turns out that it's working pretty well so I'll probably add length to this in the future but I started with an eight foot section of stair railing uh, cost about ten dollars or so and I just modeled it around that so we'll jump into the fusion 360 here and I'll show you really quick kind of how I modeled it up it's not that complex of a design but there's a few techniques in here that really make fusion 360 stand out quite a bit the first of that is a loft so you won't be able to really see it very well here so a loft function just for an example for just for an example let's make a new body here it'll do like five millimeters there we'll do like two millimeters here so that's going to represent the bottom the bottom of our top we're going to hit that and then we're going to hit this and we're going to go to create a loft and fusion 360 interpolates those dimensions for you so you don't have to do anything. So that's all I did to make that section of the body. And then I wanted to add these little portions in here. All this is is just an extruded body. That just kind of like a grip, like the bottom of a tennis shoe. All this is is an extruded body with a pattern on a path. Now we have this sketch here. And this is all I did to uh, cut the other portion out. I'm just going to grab this, any part in here. This right here is a gap of 0.2 millimeters. So that means it'll be four millimeters complete. Let's see. That means it'll be four millimeters of clearance after it gets cut out. But all we're going to do here is we're going to grab this do a press pull I'm just gonna do it symmetric just like that I add that in there I add 
that in there. I'm just holding down control as I do this. So now we have that in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go in here and do a cut. It says no target body because we don't have one. So now this is just a cut function. So what I did for the bottom pattern with the shoe pattern, I put the bodies in, then I did a combine function which gives you the same sort of layout. And then all I did was I said a cut operation with the tools being those small bodies. And then when you do that, you say okay, it ends up giving you either separate bodies in that cut function or gives you indents. So that's all I did there. Because it's a pretty large footprint, uh, it's about 12 inches across or so, so around 300 millimeters, I figured I should cut this up to make it easier to print. So that's kind of what the function of this dovetail is, but it's a 3D printing dovetail essentially because it's easier to print that way. So this allows uh, all these parts to be printed without supports because the largest, the highest degree of angle we have anywhere is about, I think I set this at um, maybe 40, I think, or something like that. So you can print the bottoms and the tops without supports. So after I cut the dovetail out um, and got two distinct pieces there and there, top and the bottom, I wanted to cut that uh, bottom section in half, right? So all I did there was I came out, made a sketch with a line here uh, straight through the middle, and I got rid of the top because I don't want to cut that. Did that and then did a modify split body, and that cuts those in half. So the way you can print this then on the bed in this orientation and then the top can actually be printed just like that no problem for printing it what I did is this top portion here is actually in 100% infill because I think that's where all the kind of push force of the push is going to come into play and then all I did was three perimeters for the right side and left side at 10% infill um, I did, these did not need supports either, it printed off really well and they slid right in. What I did for gluing it is I used a two ton epoxy, uh, I think it was, yeah it's the JB Weld plastic, uh, approved for all plastics. I coated the inside of here, these faces, and these with a layer of epoxy. Then I let them set overnight and it seemed to work really, really well. What I ended up doing was I just drilled a hole through this and I put a pin in there through the dowel and the plastic because like I said, this is just a test version of the push pull. I'm probably going to go to about a 10 foot, maybe an 11 foot section of stair railing in the future, but I just wanted to use the, the nice eight footer. It fit in the truck and I can test out this design and, and it seems to be working fine. I actually haven't really needed that extra two feet, but you can get it in any length you want, and generally the stores have those. So it's holding up remarkably well for PLA, considering it's PLA, and it's frozen twice with no cracks or anything. I had PLA lying around, and I had it in some army green, which doesn't stick out in the marsh at all, so I figured, you know, it's just a prototype. I'll print it out in that, but it's working so good now that I don't think I'm even going to really worry about it. So, um, working out pretty well. This is a 3D printing channel, so I figured I'd... Uh, show you it in action so I did a little vlog type situation of a hunt so hopefully you enjoy it and I'll send it to vlogging Elliot who doesn't know what he's doing you can call me stupid yes, you can call me sheep you can say I
Welcome to day two. Please excuse the nastiness here. I, it's 22 degrees out right now and snot's freezing to everything. So I'm back in the same pothole I was at yesterday. And ended up getting four mallards yesterday. Three green heads and a hen. Could have got four green heads, but uh, the hen came in first and then three green heads came in after I blasted the hen and that ended the, the limit. We only get four here in Wisconsin, so for the day. Uh, but came back to the same pothole, except we had a hard freeze last night, I think. Not hard, hard, but like 22, 23. So it's creeping up to the 30s right now. But uh, So this pothole was frozen, right? So I came back in here. I had to push-pull in because the water dropped so far uh, over the last week or so. So I had to push pull in. Push pull worked great, by the way. Pushed me through about two inches of water, so that's good. Uh, but I'm losing a lot of cover for the boat, so can't really put the boat anywhere. Uh, so it's kind of just hugged up against the reeds with some burlap. So that could be why I'm spooking some ducks. I think it's more of a function of the pothole being so small that any ice on it, and they don't want to land on it like at all. All right, I will. Uh, I'll catch you in a minute. Probably when I take off out of boredom a lot earlier than I thought, but we'll see. I'm a regular Don Juan today. They Don Juan nothing to do with me. I think it's a function of picking the wrong pothole. I think I'm in too small of a pothole. And, uh... They just, they, I think a flock that big couldn't get in here. I mean, they could obviously get in here, but they want something a little bigger. So I'm sure I just showed you a clip of some mallards coming in and me missing. It's an epic waste of money is what it is. So I think it's time to head out. It's been a nice day, but how much do you want to sit in the cold, you know, for just a few ducks? So give it a little while here and then we'll hit the road, stream, river, whatever.
So thanks for watching. I appreciate it. I'll put these all these files out on Thingiverse like always, uh, and hopefully print out and use it. You don't have to use this for waterfall hunting or you know any of that. You can use it for fishing. It's great uh, for smaller boats in the backwaters and stuff like that. Big pike hang out in shallow water. I've seen it, and then uh, you can catch some pretty good pan fish in some pretty shallow water as well. So get back in some of the little areas that a lot of other people won't be at so it's i think it's a useful print that uh, actually surprised me when i did it so if you liked the video maybe give it a like maybe possibly consider sharing it helps me out a lot because youtube loves not displaying videos to anybody it happens what are you gonna do if you really liked it maybe consider subscribing Love to have you around. Love, love the community. Please feel free to leave comments down below. Uh, whatever is on your mind, I will try and answer any questions as soon as possible. But until the next one, keep your amps up and your filament dry.